Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mythbusters. Today, we're taking a look at the real grade Zeta Gundam, a kit that is widely regarded to be probably the worst in the real grade line and one of the worst just modern Gundam kits in general. So, I'm not talking like old 80s kits, but a lot of people, if you ask them, what's a really bad a Gundam kit? What's one that you just have built or one that you've heard of that's just notoriously bad? It's probably this kit. So today I'm going to be building this up and finding out for myself and letting you guys know what do I think. Is it really that bad or is this myth about to be busted? So people who are defenders of this kit, you'll hear them say, yes, the kit does have some problems. It's a little bit finicky when you transform it especially, but the kit looks great. And I mean, just looking at the box art here, it does look very nice. So of course this regular uh, real grade style box art, where you have this close up of the head over here, looking very mean and cool, the full body here, and then the transformed wave rider mode in the background as well too, where a lot of the problems stem from for this kit, apparently. Over here on the side of the box, you can see this is going all the way back to number 10 in the real grade line. This kit originally came out in 2012. And on the bottom of the box here, you can see a look at the step-by-step -step of the transformation there, going from the Wave Rider mode to the Gundam form. And then you can see there's some little detail images there of the transformation of the stickers included. So you have real grade style sticker decals in there the frame for this and then here's how it looks just straight up built out of the box without any panel lining painting or anything just sticker decals on there and I mean obviously as real grades go they do tend to look very nice just straight out of the box on the top of the box we got some action poses there firing the beam rifle the beam saber and those are going to be your only weapons for this list price for this kit I believe was the standard 2500 yen that most real grade kits came out as until you got to some of the more recent ones of course, for the runners here, we'll take a look at all of those in detail in a moment. We got kind of standard Gundam colors there. White, red, blue, yellow. On the front of the manual, just the same image from the front of the box, the close-up of the Zeta Gundam's head. On the back is the decal layout, so where all those decals are going to be going on this app. We got the color chart down here at the bottom as well too. Again, very standard colors for this, so pretty easy to figure out. And then color guide there for our pilot figure. Opening up onto the inside, you got your parts list over here, and then it's just on into the construction. You do have your couple of sections in the manual with some more information there. In this case, not in anything in English, so it's all just in Japanese, but some details about the kit. Fast forward a little bit more, we got some more information here about the Wave Rider form. You can see a kind of half transformed state for that. And a little bit further on, there is a section here about the weapon as well too. I like how it says weapon, even though it clearly has weapons and a shield, but that is going to be it for the manual. The rest of the back part obviously here is just covering the transformation. So here's a look at our decal sheet. So you got the shiny foil ones over here for some little details and then a bunch of markings and everything in white, gray, and red. We've got two sets of beam saber effect parts here, SB12 for the longer type, and then this is SB6 here for the shorter type beam saber effect part there in clear pink. Our A runner here is in four colors, got a couple of clear blue parts there at the top, some white and some gray and some yellow little accent parts there as well. Runner B is our advanced MS joint number six in this case, and you can see there's all of our pre-molded frame parts there in two-tone gray. Runner C is a big full runner of black parts and right away you can see those nasty sinks there in those parts. That's not looking good. Runner D, as you can see we've got two of, is going to be all of our blue parts for the kit. Runner E is going to be all of our red parts. Runner F in gray ABS plastic is going to be some hand parts and some more frame pieces like additional frame pieces and joint pieces and stuff like that on here. Runner G also in gray ABS plastic is some more frame parts. Runner H is some more white parts for the kit, and it is slightly different from the A runner. As you can see, the A runner is actually slightly off-white, whereas the H runner is pure white. Runner I is some more blue pieces, and you would think that maybe it's in a different blue color than the D runner, but as far as I can tell, they look exactly the same, the color for those. At first I thought maybe the blue is a little bit darker, but they look exactly the same. So anyway, there's more blue parts and that's it. All right, so I will say it definitely looks a little bit more complicated than your standard kit just because usually with kits, there's a lot of very recognizable parts. You can very easily tell, okay, that's a leg frame part. Okay, that's a leg armor piece part, but there's a lot of parts in here that, you know, there's just little, small little parts. So that's kind of the thing with real grade kits, but we'll see. Let me go ahead and get this built up and then we'll see how it is. 
Hey you guys, I'm gonna interrupt in the video here just for a second because I'm working on getting all the parts ready to assemble the RG Zeta here and got a big nub mess here on the table. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with that and I thought it's a good chance to try out the desktop vacuum cleaner here from Hobby Mio. If you guys saw recently, they sent me a box of some tools and supplies and stuff to try out from them and this one I want to try out. Inside here, oh, we got some like stickers for it or something. So here it is and we have a little instruction booklet here. It looks like it takes a couple of batteries. I think those are like double A or something but it's some, anyway, it's in Chinese and it's got something that, yeah, I think those are double A's. Inside here, we've also got some stickers. So it's kind of cool. The whole thing definitely seems like a very much like mecha model kit inspired. Like you can see, it's got kind of like that aesthetic look of like a sort of mecha kit. And then we've got the stickers, marking stickers here. But all right, so two AA batteries in there, which I should comment are not brand new. I had to steal them out of a different tool. My paint mixer here to be precise, just before you guys get any ideas. But let's go ahead and switch it on. So I mean, anyway, my point is just that the batteries are not brand new, so this may not be like full power, but it seems pretty strong to be honest. Let's see. Ooh. All right, well, yeah, I guess it works pretty good. All right, so, oh, very cool. I didn't even notice that that's actually like a kind of destroy mode kind of type clear red plastic part there. That's pretty interesting as well. So anyway, very cool little vacuum, a handy little thing to just keep on your desk or something if you're building kits a lot and you just want to quick clean up. To be honest, when I'm here in my office, most of the time I just swipe it onto the floor and then I vacuum, you know, maybe once a week or something. But when I'm snap building kits up at home, this will definitely come in handy because my wife hates to find the little tiny plastic nub mark bits around somewhere. Of course they escape and then they just kind of float around the house and my wife really hates to find those. So I'll definitely take this home and use this for when I'm building there. All right guys, here it is all built up and now it's time to put the kit to the test. Is it really that bad of a kit? Is it really a hand grenade as people say? I gotta tell you, my first impression of it is that it, I can definitely tell right off the bat that it does have issues, most notably in the torso. Honestly, the arms and legs, the backpack all kind of feel fine. It's just the torso, which is kind of a problem because it's the main core. Like the arms and the legs can be fine, but they're all attached to, to the torso. And if the torso has got problems, then like the whole kit's gonna kind of fall apart. So I do understand that. Is it a hand grenade though? When I think of a hand grenade, I think of like a kit where just parts are gonna be falling off a lot, even when you're just handling the kit and you're just constantly having stuff falling off. And I don't think that that's the case with this. I mean, we'll see as we get into the review a little bit more, but so far, it doesn't seem like there's really much in the way of like loose parts. It's just the fact of like the transformation aspects of this around the chest and the hip section are very fragile. So I'm very worried about the transformation of it. But in terms of like just, getting the kit to stand up and not having any parts fall off, I think it's fine. So it's really gonna kind of depend on what you wanna do with the kit. But let's go ahead and look at it in some closer detail and see what we can find out. So for the accessories, you've got your tiny little 144 scale Camille and helmet there on the ground, and you've got an action base adapter. You've got your beam sabers and beam saber handles, and the beam saber handles will plug up into the side skirts there. Those will open up, you can plug those up inside there if you want. I'm just leaving them out for now, otherwise these will plug into the hand. As you can see, they've got the little tab sticking out of there. So these are the articulated hands, which personally I hate about the older RG kits. Luckily with this kit, you do get some alternatives. You get a set of closed fists, which I've got on the kit there, and a couple other fixed pose hands, an open hand for the left side, and a trigger finger hand for the right side, which does also have a hole in it, so it looks like you can use the beam saber handles also with this hand, which is great. Here is the beam rifle, which is quite nice. There is supposed to be a clear part in there for the camera lens. I've left that out for now, but it's just this little clear blue part that pops in there. You can also fold this down, of course, for the transformation. And this is one thing that I've noticed is loose on this kit is this E-pack here on the beam rifle does not want to stay on there very well. So I would definitely recommend just putting a little bit of glue or something on that. This little tab also folds out the back, again, just for the transformation. Also, the rifle does extend, of course. You can extend that out. This is at the extended length and the shorter length. So it's just like about a centimeter difference between that. And then our other set of beam saber effect parts that we had for this, if you remember, we also had the shorter type. That's for plugging into the end of the beam rifle. So you can plug that in. So you have two of them, you only use one for this, we can plug that into the beam rifle for when it's using it as a melee weapon here. We also got two of these little guys, which I, as far as I know, I think are like ammo 
containers that which will plug onto the back of the forearms here like that. So you got two of those for the left and the right side. We've got some cool little landing gear pieces which you'll swap out on the kit for when it's transformed if you want to have it just like landing in its wave rider form. Last but certainly not least, of course, we have the shield here which is has the connector there, has little missiles there. Very cool shield design. Now normally next I would want to go into checking out some of the articulation, but I will just kind of say in general it's kind of basic early RG articulation. Anything you would expect to move moves about as you would expect it to. It's just a matter of you have to be really careful with it and that's one thing that I've noticed with this kit is that I can definitely feel there are weak points when you're moving stuff around. You can feel like for example here with this the way the front skirts and the side skirts attach like at the top of the leg and the leg is like basically attached into like kind of the back skirt there. Moving that around, it feels not safe to be overly zealous with your moving that. So just be very careful and, uh, you know, be very intentional when you're moving stuff around. So, you know, move it slowly, carefully. If you feel it like kind of being tight, then, you know, just make sure you're really careful with it. The same thing here with the ankle, it's kind of connected weirdly like at the back. And so moving that, I feel that's also probably a very dangerous point. One of the most annoying sections for me is these white parts here at the midsection because they're kind of like just floating around there. They're articulated for the transformation and they're meant to be like in a certain spot to look right. But however I move them, they just kind of don't end up looking right or they kind of pop up the chest like that, like that's not supposed to be. So these don't really have any place where they like lock into place, which I find kind of annoying. But other than that, I mean, once you get them into looking like they're pretty good. I just don't really like how you have like these big hollow spaces like right here there's just a big gap right here and like the armpit is just this big hole right there and I get that's like that's the Zeta's design and because of the transformation that's just how these parts kind of fold in over each other that there's just some empty spaces but for me personally I just find that kind of very weird looking and although it's very unnecessary I will just demonstrate this to show you guys I'll shake the kit and you can see it's not even like losing the pose okay adjust that into an action pose sort of something like this now let's give it a shake and see okay yeah i can feel the torso is a little wiggly uh like this section in here because this is where this part folds down over the front of the chest uh or where the chest part folds down over the anyway that's the part that's kind of the most tricky because if that that like plugs into like the armpits and also plugs in down here and also plugs in at like the right spot here in the center and it's just kind of a lot of things that are working at once that if anything's out of place then the whole thing just kind of looks weird but honestly it's not looking too bad so far the stabilizer raises here at the top so I'll opt to show off some of the articulation basically just through trying out some different action poses with weapons and everything and honestly I mean Guys, the kit looks great, I will admit. The kit looks very good. Uh, posing it can be a little bit wonky just because of the lack of articulation in the torso section, like when not being able to rotate that. Again, that's just kind of all part of the design, really. But, I mean, the kit does look very nice. It's very nicely detailed. You got that nice RG style color separation of like the two-tone white going on there on the white parts. The weapons and accessories are really quite cool. The rifle, how it extends, and how you can plug the beam saber effect part into that. I really like the shield design. And honestly, posing the kit, I'm not really having that much trouble with it, to be honest. Now, one thing that I do want to say, uh, for those of you guys who have built this kit, if you struggle with it, if you really had a bad experience with it, I'm not here to discount your guys' bad experience and say, oh, you're just wrong or oh, you built it wrong or anything like that. I mean, if you had a bad experience with it, then that's unfortunate that you had a bad experience with it. So far, I'm not really having any pr problems with it really that much. Now, of course, I've not transformed it yet, and the transformation is... I think what's probably commonly known to be the biggest problem with this kit and where I'm sure a lot of you guys who have built it have struggled with it was with the transformation. Now, I'm planning to only transform this kit once and only once and that would be my recommendation for you guys if you're getting this as well. If you want to get this kit and if you want to have it in wave rider form, transform it once and leave it in wave rider form. If you want to have it in just robot form, then just don't ever transform it. That would be my advice to you guys. If you enjoy doing transformations on kits, then just to get a different kit. <laughs> if you want to do the transformation back and forth and back and forth, get something like uh, either the high grade version of this, which does include parts for parts forming it. That I think would just be just a safer option for you. Or if you wanted something that's a little bit more detailed, there's also the master grade 2.0 version of this, which I've 
uh, heard and then from my experience building the gray zeta I know that one also can be a little bit difficult to transform but I'll be it's kind of a complicated transformation I don't think it really has that much of like a, a danger of parts breaking that this one has so just wrap up the review for you guys now I'm gonna go ahead and transform the kit and then we'll see how it looks in wave rider form so alright guys here it is transformed and let's get the big questions out of the way number one was the transformation difficult uh, yes it was complicated it was a pain in the ass it takes a long time it's you have to be very delicate with it but did I break anything no I did not does it feel strong does it feel weak does it feel like there's a bunch of floppy parts all over the place honestly no not really it feels pretty solid for the most part and ultimately the most important question does it look Look good I gotta say yes I think it does look very good I'm honestly quite impressed at how good a job Bandai has done with this considering how much transformation is involved with the Zeta Gundam and to cram that all into 144 scale honestly it's pretty impressive I gotta say with this kit there are definitely parts of the transformation you are certainly going to want to be careful of so I mean like I said before when you're moving stuff around when you're doing the transformation especially with like the pre-molded parts around the hips and the torso section just make sure you're moving everything slowly carefully deliberately and you know take your time with it and honestly I think you'll be fine and like I said before I would really only recommend transforming this kit once if you want to I can definitely see how some of those uh, joints and things are going to get stressed if you're transforming it back and forth multiple times and that's going to make it more likely that you're going to break something in there but honestly if you just transform it once if you want to have it in wave rider mode transform it once like this and I don't think you're going to have any problems with it if you just take your time follow the instructions carefully so before rendering my final verdict on this guys just a big thank you to us Gundam store as always for making this all possible check out the different RG kits and everything we've got there in stock at us Gundam store the link and the coupon code will be down in the video description below as always for you guys so big thank you to them thank you you guys all for your support now is this kit a hand grenade of a kit honestly I would say it's just not a hand grenade at all does it have weak points yes absolutely is it the worst RG kit I mean I, it really depends on what your criteria are honestly I would have a hard time saying that it's the worst RG kit because it, it's a great kit I mean it does transform fully which is pretty impressive it, it does look really nice proportionally details everything does look really good so it really depends on what your what your criteria is for best and worst is it one of the worst I guess like objectively probably just because of the weakness of it but honestly I gotta tell you guys I think this kit gets a lot more hate than it deserves I can tell you first from my experience with this so I'm just gonna have to call this myth absolutely busted definitely check this kit out if you're a fan there are other alternatives that I think would be better the master grade if you prefer 100 scale honestly I still kind of prefer the HD revive kit over this but if you wanted a more detailed version again this would be a good bet for you so the Zeta Gundam comes out of this review absolutely vindicated let me know your guys thoughts down in the comment section below what do you think do you agree or disagree I'm sure a lot of you are still gonna disagree but that's my thoughts and as you guys know I've built a few kits so I hope that my opinion does have some weight for you guys but anyway let me know your thoughts thank you so much for watching and checking out the video guys i'll see y'all in the next one bye bye